Hey guys, my name is Beth, and if you're like me, you may have wondered how so many YouTube creators and other filmmakers are able to design such awesome animations, intro graphics, text animations, logo animations, transitions, lower thirds, subscribe buttons, you name it. There are so many cool, well-designed animations and graphics that they are using. So where are they finding them and how can you do the same? It might seem like they have built all of these themselves and spent hours and hours putting them in their own video, but the secret is that they are not. They are simply downloading these templates online. They are something called Mogart files, which is a motion graphic template and they're actually really easy to use. So in today's video, I'm going to walk you through step-by-step, step, even if you are a very beginner, and how to use Mogart files in your own projects, where to find them, how to install them on your own computer, how to bring them into Premiere Pro, and then how to put them in your project and customize them to fit your video. All right, first thing you need to know is that I am going to be walking through this tutorial in Premiere Pro. So if you don't have Adobe Premiere Pro already, I will leave a link for you below. You can try it out for free for a month. And it's my favorite video editing software. Um, I think it's really intuitive and easy to use and it's what I use for all of my tutorials. So check that link out below if you don't already have Premiere Pro. A lot of these templates that we'll go over today also work in Final Cut Pro. So if that's what you use to edit, that's fine too. So the first question is where do you find these motion graphics templates? Where do you find Mogart files? There's a couple of different places that you can shop for them online. My favorite place is called Envato, and there are two ways that you can buy them. You can buy them from their marketplace, and what that means is you can basically just find exactly which template you want to buy, buy that template and use it. They're pretty cheap, anywhere from like $10 up to uh, sometimes $50, but usually those higher priced ones include a ton of different templates within the one download. So they're pretty inexpensive to use. And if you know you're just needing one specific thing, one specific animation, the Envato Marketplace would be the way to go. But if this is something that you know you're gonna be using on a monthly basis, for example, if you have a YouTube channel or um, some other format where you know you're gonna be making multiple videos, then you may wanna go ahead and try out the Envato Elements website. This is a monthly subscription. I believe right now it's around $16 per month, so it's really not too expensive. It will pay for itself if you download one per month, but of course the downloads are unlimited, which is awesome. So you can go on there and you can download all the different templates that you might wanna try out. Try them in your project. If you don't like them, no problem. You're just paying one monthly fee and you can get as many templates as you want throughout the month. So this is what I use and I love it. And when I'm showing you the examples today, that's what I'll be going through. So you're gonna see in real time what a lot of the templates look like and how we actually use them in Premiere Pro. And I'll leave links to both the Marketplace and Envato Elements in the description box below if you wanna check those out. All right, so let's hop on into Envato Elements and I'm gonna show you how to pick out a few of these templates and then how we're gonna use them in a project. Okay, so here we are in the Envato Elements website and you see here that you have so many options for free templates to download. In this video, obviously we're going over video templates, but I just wanna show you really quick how many options there are. You can download stock photos, stock video, graphic templates, audio files, and graphics if you are a designer, fonts, presentation templates, and there's many more. So um, it's just really a cool site to get any kind of assets that you might need for your projects. But let's go into video templates and let's find something that we might wanna download for our project. And you can see right away that there are a lot of ways to narrow down what you're looking for. So because we are focusing on Premiere Pro, I wanna make sure that we check Premiere Pro under applications supported. This will just make sure that um, you don't need After Effects or another program in order to use these files. So the only ones that are gonna pop up here are templates that we can actually edit the entire thing in Premiere Pro, which is what we want. And then if we wanna narrow it down even more, we can look over here by category and we can decide um, if there's a certain type of template that you're looking for. You can also go up here to the search box and type in specific 
search terms that you are looking for. And then again, over here, you can sort by popular or you can even search by new templates. So let's scroll down and find something that looks interesting. And you'll see too that as you scroll over these different templates that it's gonna begin to play back for you. My internet's a little bit slow right now. But if you have faster internet than I do, I live in the boonies, um, when you hover over each of these, it's gonna give you a little preview of what that looks like. So let's go ahead and click on this one. And once you click into this screen, um, it's gonna give you more details about this specific template. It's gonna show you how it plays back for you and you'll begin to see if it looks like something that you might wanna use in your project. Let's just say that we are creating a little promo or a little intro for our video and we wanna download this template and customize it for our video. I'm gonna just walk you through how easy this is to do. So first thing you want to do is go over here to download and you are going to either want to create a new project if you don't have any created already, or if you've already created a project, then you can simply click which project you're gonna be using this template for. And the reason why Envato wants you to do this is for copyright purposes. You do get unlimited downloads. There's no limit to how many times you can use this template, but they just wanna make sure that you're assigning it to each specific project that you're using it for in the case that you might be using it multiple times. That way there is no copyright copyright violation in the future. And if you don't have any projects here, all you would have to do is um, click create new project and say whatever you want your project to be called. And then it's gonna automatically add that to your new project. So let's hit add and download. And if you are working on a Mac like I am, you're gonna see up here in the top right corner, this is where your download is going to start to show and it's gonna show you the progress of how much has been downloaded so far. So I wanted to go ahead and just download one more template here for you guys to show you another example of how to create lower thirds. You could also use these to animate um, any kind of main text within your video. And between this example and the example of the promo that we did just before, these are going to cover the two main file types that you're gonna find on Envato Elements with the video templates. One of them is a Premiere Pro project, and then this one contains true Mogart files, which are a little bit different. So I'm gonna walk you through how to do both of them. I will go ahead and download this template as well by hitting add and download, and then we will um, cover how to get them into Premiere. Pro. Okay, once you have finished downloading your template, you're going to open up a new finder window and navigate over to downloads. And here we go. These are the two templates that we just downloaded. I'm going to open up a new folder by right clicking on the finder window, hit new finder window. And over here, I'm going to navigate to desktop. This is where I have my Mogart files saved. You can create a new folder and name it whatever you would like it to, and you can keep it either on your desktop or you might wanna keep it on an external hard drive as well. So I'm gonna open up this folder and I'm gonna drag these two downloads that we just downloaded into my Mogart files folder. And now we're done. I'm going to close out of these windows and next you want to open up Premiere Pro. I already have mine opened here as you can see. And over here you'll see um, I have my essential graphics panel opened up already. If you don't see this panel here, I'm gonna show you how to open it up on your system. Go up here to window and make sure that you click on essential graphics and it should pop up right there for you. And if you don't like the location where it pops up, sometimes it'll pop up here and be floating. Um, all you have to do is pick it up by the title and you can drag it wherever you'd like it to be. So this is not convenient right here. So I'm going to pick it up again and it's gonna show you by these little purple areas, all the places that you can put it. You might wanna put it up here or you can keep it down here like I have it. Okay, let's start by importing our Mogart files first. These will be the lower thirds that we downloaded. So what you wanna do is first make sure that you've checked local and libraries right here in your browse window of the Essential Graphics panel. And we're gonna go up here to this little hamburger, click on that, and you're gonna go down here to where it says manage additional folders. That's gonna open up a new window right here in the middle. And you can see here are a few that I already have in my system. I'm going to hit add to go ahead and add the new files that we 
downloaded. We're going to go back over to where we saved those files. I saved mine on my desktop in the Mogart files folder. These are the lower thirds that we downloaded. So I'm going to open up that folder, find out where those Mogart files are. And you can see here they're grayed out, but you can see the dot Mogart at the end. That means that this folder contains the Mogart files we are looking for. So just click on that directly outermost folder there and hit select folder. And that's going to bring that in right here and we're going to click OK. And then in just a minute, we should see these pop up in our window right here. If you don't see them, then just again, make sure that local and libraries are um, checked off here. And there we go. They went ahead and populated for us. And um, I wish that there was an easier way to preview these template files. Um, I have read that depending on who designs them, sometimes you can just by hovering over them but I've never been able to do it. So um, really the only way to preview these files is to actually um, click on the one that you wanna try and drag it over to your timeline and you'll see it right here. I always put mine at the end so it doesn't mess up anything that I've already edited. I'm gonna zoom in right here and see this clip a little bit bigger. Um, you'll see this red line right here. That means that this clip needs to be rendered in order for us to play it back smoothly. So the quickest way that I find to do this is by creating an endpoint by hitting I on my keyboard and O for an out point. And now I just hit enter and it's going to render just that clip itself, the space in between the in and out points. And once that little bar turns green, we can go ahead and play it back. And there's our animation and that is too long. So if you find that it's too long, you can simply drag the ends to make it the length that you want it to be. Let me show you how easy it is to customize these lower thirds as well. Over here, we were in the browse panel here on this side and make sure that you've clicked the edit tab over here on the right. And then we can change the text to be whatever we want it to be. So you can change the actual, make sure that your clip is selected. You can change the actual text. You can change the position of your entire lower thirds here. You can change the size of the two boxes and you can change the colors of the text or the background colors themselves as well. Um, let's say that we wanna put this over some footage. I'm gonna take my clip and I'm gonna drag it over here in my timeline and let's just find a place over here where we can put it. I'm going to zoom in to show you guys. And again, we're going to have to create a new endpoint and a new out point, And we're going to need to render that so we can watch it back. All right, now it's turned green and we can watch it. You name it. There are so many cool, well designed. So the animation looks cool. And let's say that we want to put it over here on the right side. There's two ways you can do it. You can change the position size over here um, within this window. I find it for some reason to be less responsive that way. I like to change my position up here in the effect controls panel. Um, you can just find your position right here and drag it over where you'd like it to go and drag it down a little bit. We can also change how big it is right there. Change the scale um, by dragging this right here as well. Every time that you make a change, you will have to re-render. And let's also say that we wanted to change these colors right here. All you'd have to do is click on that. And let's say that we want this to be like a uh, blue color here. And now you can see it's a little bit hard to see that text. So let's change that text color to white. You name it, there are so many cool, well designed. And that's it. You can see how easy that is to use. Let's say you wanted to use this other places throughout your video. If you had other interviews with different people or um, you wanted to change the um, text throughout, all you'd have to do is copy and paste this clip and put it wherever you'd like it. You can copy and paste by hitting Command C to copy and then Command V um, to paste it wherever you'd like it to go. Another quick trick is to um, select your clip and hold down the Alt button and then you can drag another version of it over here and you can double click on that one and then you can change it um, to be custom to whatever you want it to be. All right, I'm going to delete these and show you one more example. I'm going to come back down here to the end. Let's go over here to browse and let's find another one that we might want to play with. Uh, let's try this one. I'm going to drag that in 
And what I want to do is maybe use this as um, some kind of a transitional text if I want to introduce something new, a new concept in my video. So uh, let's say I want to make it bigger. So I'm going to make it, I'm going to make it 200 times as big, sorry, 100 times bigger. And then um, let's put it in the middle so we can see it. Just going to eyeball this here and double click and hit edit and let's change our text. Readjust the position. And I'm going to make an endpoint and an out point and then I'm going to render and we'll watch it back and you can see how um, you can easily use a lot of these lower third animations for um, transitional text or animated text anywhere in your video. And there we go. So I hope this shows you how easy it is to import the Mogart files and how easy it is to customize them over here and you simply can drag them over your um, video as you create your video. For this next example, we're gonna pull in the other template that we downloaded from Envato. And I wanted to show you this example because it's a little bit different. This is likely what you will see if you download any kind of a slideshow, opener, promo type video. It's gonna come in the form of a Premiere Pro project file. And the way that we import this is actually even more simple, I think. So you just come up here to your import window and you can either double click in here or you can right click and go down to import and then you're gonna find that file. Um, this is on my desktop in the Mogart files folder. Here it is, it was called dynamic sport. So we open that up and then when we open up this Premiere Pro project folder, we will find the project right there. And if you ever get lost when you're doing this, a lot of times these creators will create these help files and they'll give you a video tutorial that shows you exactly how to install this project and how to use it, which is really helpful. So once we find that Premiere Pro project, you'll know because it says .pr, .proj, then you're going to hit import and Premiere Pro is gonna prompt you here, just hit okay. And then you will see the project load up here in a folder. And so when we open up the folder, we're gonna see what's inside right here. This is our final uh, video, it's our final sequence. So if we double click on that, you're gonna see right down here in the timeline, um, there is where all of your scenes are. It's where we'll put all of our footage and change all the text to be how we want it to go. It can also be um, where you'll also drop down audio files if you wanna have music playing uh, or, or dialogue underneath. And then it's also where you can change the timing. So if you want things to be shorter or longer, you can drag those clips and move them around. Let's go through a few of them and I'm gonna show you how easy it is to customize these Premiere Pro projects. So if we want to start editing this sequence here, we're gonna go on up to our top right here where it says modify, and we're gonna open up that folder and we're gonna find the scenes that we want to modify. Let's just start with number one and we'll double click. These are sequences, so it's gonna take us in a little closer um, and it says media here. So in order to put our media in there, let's open up this folder and let's drag our uh, footage or our photo that we wanna use into this number one folder here. So I'm going to right click and hit import. And I am going to navigate on over to where I saved some just example footage that we can use. And I'm gonna pull that in for us. And these are just kind of random. I tried to look for um, some action kind of shots to put in. So I'm gonna drag that in right there and I'm gonna lock this top layer so that way I can delete that bottom audio layer because I don't want any audio in there. Um, so all I did was just hit delete once I had selected it. Now we can unlock that again. We're gonna make this shorter so it's the same um, duration as this example that they left for us right down here. And then we want to change the text up here. So we're gonna double click on this sequence and we will change the first text. We're going to double click on that text layer and then we are going to double click here and we'll type in our new text. Let's say my, and then to change this other text, I believe it was on a different layer down here. So we'll double click here. And then we're gonna change this bottom one to, let's say, channel. 
Okay, and close out of these. And let's go back to the final here and see how this looks. And again, we have to render. So we're gonna hit an endpoint right here, an out point. Let's render. And let's play that back and see how it looks. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and start editing scene two. So to get back to scene two, we're gonna hit this little arrow that's gonna take us back to where we were and we're gonna find number two and I'm gonna double click to open up number two, double click here and um, we're gonna put some more footage right here. So let's again, import another uh, video, import. Let's just do our second one here and we'll drag that down and we're gonna make it a little bit shorter so it's the same duration as the example they gave us. We'll go back into our final, give it, I'll give it a preview in just a second. Let's do, uh, we'll do three and four really quick and then we'll watch the whole thing that we have so far. So I'm gonna go back into number three, double click and you're gonna get the idea here really quickly. We're going to import our footage. Drag it down here. I want my footage to end right there. So I'm gonna make a cut and I'm gonna select that and delete it. Then we are going to go back to number four. So we'll go into number four and we'll start with our media here. We're gonna import another video. I'm gonna make a cut right there and delete that. And then I'm gonna go up to my text sequence and we're gonna change this. And I'm just making these up. These are not anything meaningful, of course you would uh, customize these to your own project. I just wanted to have something to fill in here. And the way that I knew how to change these layers, by the way, is because I watched the uh, help video that came with this file. So I'm kind of speeding through it because I want to show you guys really quick, but um, you'll know for each project that you download specifically how to do all this stuff because you can watch the help video and it'll tell you step by step for each template that you download. So I'm going to render this really quick and I'll just show you what it's starting to look like in these first few seconds so you can have an idea of how easy this is to customize um, and that'll be it. All right, let's watch it back. And that's it. I mean, if this was something that we were working on, we would just continue to go on through here. And then this creator also is allowing you to change all the different colors, which is great if you have um, certain specific brand colors that you wanna follow. So you guys, that pretty much sums it up for how to import a Premiere Pro project and get started with customizing it. Like I said, refer back to the help videos that they will give with you when you download these projects. Um, but in general, they're pretty easy to follow. They're very well organized in most cases. And you kind of just drag and drop your own footage and uh, customize your fonts and your text. And then, you know, as you're going through, like down here, if you wanted this to be shorter, um, you would just drag that clip up right there pick up these following clips and make sure that they come closer so you don't have any gaps. So it's pretty easy to uh, even customize the timing and things to be even shorter if you need them to be, or if you know you wanted your intro to only be five seconds, then it could just be those first five seconds. You end it here and you um, have your export and you just have a five minute little introductory opener here. All right, guys, that's it for today's video. I hope you've enjoyed learning a little bit more about how to use Mogart files in Premiere Pro. Leave me a comment below if you have any questions that I didn't answer and hope to see you guys again soon.